the average US citizen uses a lot of water whether we're going to count a hundred gallons per day which is just in your home for everything around the home not just brushing your teeth but watering the lawn uh, laundry it's over 2000 when you add in the virtual water which is the water for your stuff and the food you eat meanwhile the average African if they even have access has about two toilet flushes worth of water per day and um, this is something to think about water scarcity is something that's gonna have to be dealt with in the coming years in more than just the countries in Africa it's because of water accessibility being indifferent around the world it's unequal so whereas uh, we have unequal distribution of other resources like oil or coal water is also distributed unequally and we'll just need more of it in the coming years in the coming decades and so while the average US citizen is responsible for anywhere from a hundred gallons that's just in the house um, or if you consider the virtual water that would be all the water for everything you buy and eat that would be over 2,000 gallons of water a day the average African has about two flushes two toilet flushes of water per day if they even have access to it scarcity will be important even in countries that have plenty of water just because it's only projected that our needs for water will increase upwards just as our needs for energy will as well water can dissolve many things so we called it the universal solvent and that at the molecular level is important for understanding why a reaction will form a precipitate but on the macro scale this causes water to be easily polluted so these are the environmental consequences of the fact that water is something that can dissolve most polar compounds and most ionic compounds so that's the solubility so uh, what nobody purposely pollutes water it's just that water naturally picks up salts these are ions like sodium and potassium um, that's because most ions are soluble um, fertilizers which contain nitrates those naturally end up in um, water and end up filtering down to our groundwater sources like the Oglala aquifer um, metals and mining waste so this is when there's mining like the mount mountaintop mining removal uh, or anything that's underground that can easily end up in a nearby water source like the Oglala aquifer and so that uh, aquifers that are underground even though they are underground they should not be polluted they can be polluted by these processes where mining and underground uh, is involved fracking is another one that I mentioned earlier that that can lead to water pollution because that's all occurring underground where our same pure water fresh water sources are in California we don't have the Oglala aquifer but what we do have is a lot of farming so this shows the map of California with the uh, concentrations of nitrates so nitrates are from agriculture they're from fertilizer and so this is monitored by the EPA so we're lucky for that and this is from the Clean Water Act uh, this is when there's a red that means that this is above the maximum contaminant level so just like we have standards for air pollution we have standards or maximum contaminant levels that's for water so if you have a low number that means this is um, a maximum contaminant level that's low and that must be toxic a high number value is not as toxic and so these were they're red this is where there's been water contamination and so in Santa Monica where we are this little spur of the state of California there's been some greater than the maximum contaminant level in our local water sources so remember how our water comes from the Colorado River over here to the east and to the north from the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir well we can see those are clean but because of the agriculture in the middle of the state and even local we have some uh, water pollution this was one of the more prominent stories was the water pollution in Flint Michigan where uh, families were reporting health issues but the city itself said no there's nothing wrong with our water and so the EPA allows a certain amount of lead 15 parts per million that's uh, parts per million ppm lead and the Flint homes are found to have 
10 times that. And so that was a little bit of this corruption that happened at the political level where water was had to be sent out of, secretly sent out of the city and, and tested. And then finally, after years of health and tests, outside tests, were the officials finally able to admit that there was water pollution from their own infrastructure, from their pipes, that lead pipes were were proven to be the cause.